the symbolism of feet and shoes. Naked feet symbolize purity, free of material encumbrances. Thus, the foot without a shoe symbolizes a disembodied or pure soul. This symbolism is virtually universal and is a mark of respect, bearing oneself before one's god or gods. For example, in Hindu temples, mosques, and many other religious buildings. The foot with a shoe is an embodied soul. A shoe thus takes on the symbolism of the body, much as clothes do. People kick off their shoes in visions and are frequently told to take off their shoes. The person capable of seeing the spiritual world has symbolically taken off his shoes. He stops being separated from the spiritual by the barrier of his foot covering his body. The first Bushman's Path Stories, Songs and Testimonies of the Zam of the Northern Cape Anna Kagan said to the moon that was once his shoe Speak, you should speak, because you are Kagan's shoe, and you always used to speak when I wore you on my foot. Plato and Leather The symbolism derives in part from the idea of skin being the same symbolically as leather, at a time when most shoes were made of leather. Plato, Symposium Apollo was bidden to compose their forms, so he gave a turn to the face and pulled the skin from the sides all over that which in our language is called the belly, like the purses which draw in, and he made one mouth at the centre, which he fastened in a knot, the same which is called the navel. He also moulded the breast and took out most of the wrinkles, much as a shoemaker might smooth leather upon a last. He left a few, however, in the region of the belly and navel as a memorial of the primeval state. Footprints in Stone The Norse and Celtic races have in the past carved the image of shod feet. Here the symbolism is a memorial of someone. If it is found near water, there is added symbolism, their soul covered by their physical body going towards dissolution and death. Water. In contrast, feet might be carved in the rock, shoeless, as in this example here, painted on a stone. At Tarnum, in the north of Bohuslän, Sweden, a UNESCO World Heritage Site. This example is from Dunard in Argyll and Boot in Scotland, dating from the Iron Age and the capital of the ancient kingdom of Dal Riata. Here the soul is naked, free of its body, indicating an enlightened being or a god. Hidden Shoes in Houses Concealed shoes hidden in the fabric of a building have been discovered all over the world. They appear to have been hidden so that they are not found in chimneys, under floors, above ceilings, around doors and windows, in the roof. Furthermore, concealed shoes have been found in many types of building, 
including country houses, public houses, a Benedictine monastery and a Baptist church. One pair was discovered behind the choir stalls in Winchester Cathedral, which were installed in 1308. Northampton Museum in the UK maintains a concealed shoe index, which by 2012 contained 1,900 reports of discoveries, mostly from Britain. But there are examples found in ancient Egyptian pyramids. Nearly all have been worn, many have been repaired, suggesting they belong to an actual person. As the symbolic meaning became less well known, one may find only one shoe, indicating superstition had taken over and people thought of them as some sort of magic charm. But earlier finds are in pairs and show that belief in reincarnation was more widespread than once thought, as it simply expresses the hope that the immortal soul of a deceased person does not return and have to wear shoes, a body, again. In other words, does not have to reincarnate. Wounded feet. A wounded foot means a wounded soul, a weakness and an area of vulnerability psychologically. Certain parts of the foot, such as the heel, are areas of particular vulnerability and attack. This is true in many cultures, hence we have Achilles, but also the heels of Sigurd and Krishna. To have a thorn or splinter in one's foot also indicates a wounded soul. Rumi, The Love Poems, from A Thorn in the Heart. Upon her pulse he laid his gentle hand. He spoke of the problems of life, like thorns in the foot, which are hard to find. We moisten the spot, we touch the lips, so painful, so tricky. A thorn in the foot. Imagine how much harder a thorn in the heart. If we could all find the thorns in our hearts, no sorrow would gain the upper hand. Lameness Lameness is simply an alternative way of expressing shoe symbolism. The higher spirit has acquired a body and has thus been hobbled. By extension, lameness also shows the hobbling effect of intellect and involvement in the material world. The Greek god Hephaestus was both a smith and lame. The smith works with fire to forge material things, a world in time. Wikipedia Hephaestus was a Greek god whose mother was Hera. He was the god of technology, blacksmiths, craftsmen, artisans, sculptors, metals, metallurgy, fire and volcanoes. Bigfoot This picture comes from the Nuremberg Chronicles and is called Umbrella Foot. He is a naked man. Nakedness means a spiritual person. Bigfoot is always free of shoes. Thus it represents soul in permanent communication with higher spirit. Anyone called Bigfoot would have been a very, very powerful spiritual figure as in Chief Bigfoot here. Feet pointing backwards. W.B. Yeats Images What marks upon the yielding clay? Two marks made by my feet, two by my daemon's feet, but all confused, because my marks and his are on the self-same spot. His toes 
where my heels fell, for he and I, pausing a moment in our headlong flight, faced opposite ways, my future being his past. High Heels Why High Heels? Well, there are many mundane reasons. Fitting your heel into a horse's stirrup. Raising your feet above the mud and filth of the streets. Making your legs look more attractive as it tightens the buttocks and firms the calf muscles and thighs. At one time an attribute paraded by men in tights. Status in a household which had servants. The higher the heels, the less you were likely to be able to do so. So it showed who did the work. And fashion. But in the theatre, tribal and shamanic societies, and in mystic groups like the geisha, they were used to give the impression the person was in heaven. Walking in the clouds, way above normal mortals, in effect, enlightened beings. The Mystical Life, J. H. M. Whiteman Many customs or fashions in this physical world seem to have been prompted by an unconscious striving to model oneself on or suggest conditions in the higher spiritual spheres and the pulsingly vital beauty there. Thus it seems to me that women's hairstyles are often the result of unconscious attempts to imitate the astonishing beauty of hair of feminine angels in higher spheres. A liking to wear high-heeled shoes may arise partly from a slight realisation of the joy of movement in the exceedingly lightweight, feminine, angelic form, with the heels naturally and effortlessly raised from the ground when one moves at all quickly. All such things are the expression of divine life and hence stir the heart indescribably. In the same way, the wearing of nylon stockings seems to me to bear some relation to the beauty of spiritual skin on angelic forms and to its colour, which is sometimes of an astonishing glowing or amber-like tinge, a liking to get the physical body, suntanned, may also have the same kind of origin. <laughs>